Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be playing with some ray casting and getting a object to fall underneath our cursor in game so we can use it for testing. Uh, for some of the next videos in our grass uh, render we are going to need to be able to drop objects uh, and so that's what we're going to be working on today. Uh, it should be pretty quick so I'm just going to get started uh, and it should hopefully go relatively smoothly and be fairly quick. Uh, so I'm going to just call this our ray dropper. And so the idea here is this is going to attach to our camera uh, and we're going to cast a ray from our camera, hit a point on our map, and then if we hit that point and click a button, uh, like the left mouse button or some special hotkey, we'll drop a thing. Uh, I think we can actually make this, thinking about this just quickly, I don't know if dictionaries are supported by Unity, but we're going to try uh, because I'm thinking, actually, yeah, so I'm going to try dictionary first. Uh, if that doesn't work, I have another idea, uh, but let's do key code. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a key code. So you could assign different objects, different prefabs uh, to different key codes. And then when you press that key code, it will place something under your mouse. So you could theoretically have like a hundred and some different objects assigned here uh, that you can drop simply by pressing a button. Uh, so we're going to do that and we're going to make it uh, object list, I guess. <clears throat> And so what we want to do is if, uh, this is going to be hard. Let's do, yeah, we're going to have to do a for each here. So for each var key in our object list. So we have, well, actually key value, uh, cause we're going to, that's our key code and our object. Uh, so that's just the tuple there. Uh, and then we need to do a test here. So input dot get key down. Uh, and we can just pass in our key code here. So key value dot key. Uh, so we're seeing if our button was pressed. If it is, uh, this will be the first frame it's pressed. Then we want to do our thing. Uh, so I'm going to turn this into an if. So I'm just going to wrap that around like so. And then if it is, we're going to test drop object and we're going to drop a key value object. Cool. That doesn't work. <laughs> I keep always trying to, for some reason, some of the hotkeys just don't work anymore. And I don't, I don't know what's going on, but they just don't work. Uh, all right. We just want the value here. So I'm going to refactor this a bit and we'll call this our prefab. Cool. Uh, before we get too much further, let's test this. So let's just drop our ray dropper. Uh, and it doesn't look like we get any inspector for our dictionary. Uh, so luckily we should be able to fix this by just doing a list. Uh, we could actually just do an array, but I'm going to create a struct. Uh, and this is going to be our key prefab tuple, which is a weird name, but it'll work. Uh, and then we just need a public key code, uh, which will just be the key that it's bound to. And then a public uh, game object that's going to be our prefab that we want to create. Uh, so this. A struct and a class are slightly different. Uh, structs are go not going to be reference types. Structs are value types. Uh, so the actual values are stored here compared to a, a with a class, these would be reference types. Uh, so the most classic struct is like a vector two or vector three. Uh, and like game objects are obviously classes. So the cool thing with structs, unlike objects, uh, in Unity, structs are rendered in the inspector as uh, the they get a custom inspector. 
So if I do this, uh, that's not going to compile. Let me fix that quick. Let's do key and prefab. And that's why we're fixing it now. But uh, maybe why? Now I'm confused. Oh, ha, I didn't save. Well, <laughs> we'll never know if I was right or wrong. Why isn't it there? It should be there. Well, I may have lied a bit. Yeah, it doesn't seem to like to save, but anyway. Gonna try one more thing. We're gonna try it with a list now. Save for real this time. Okay then, uh, just for tests. <laughs> for some reason, when it does that, it doesn't actually save correctly. Yeah, so that one works. Uh, so I guess we need a custom editor, and I don't want to throw that together right now. That's unfortunate. Oh, we're going to go back to the dictionary if that's the case. Key code and game object. Cool. Uh, let's do key and value. Cool. And then we can drop our struct and everything is good. We're back to where it was a few minutes ago. Uh, but I can't edit those. <clears throat> uh, so what we're going to do, uh, this is super gross, is we are going to I didn't want to do this, but okay, fine. Key code array, key codes, and a game object array of game objects. Uh, so we're going to have two arrays here, and then we're going to initialize our list equal to a new dictionary, like so. One sec. I'm curious. Just slightly curious. I don't think this is going to change anything. But it's been a while since I've worked with dictionaries and Unity's inspector, so I want to check. And that's just the fastest way to do it. So, okay. Uh, so we have to create a dictionary. Uh, is that the best way to do this? I think we can do this better. If I drop this, we should... I'm going to say that a lot, but uh, should be able to map, join, group join. Uh, shoot, I don't remember. There's a link command to build dictionaries, but I don't remember what it is. <laughs> so well, this may, that may have to be later. To dictionary. So... One sec, if I join it with the game objects. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> this is getting way, way more complicated than it needs to be. <sighs> Let's just create a new dictionary. <sighs> Spent too much time on that, and it wasn't going to be for much value. Uh, so for each int i, not from i to i, there we go. i is less than our key codes dot length. Uh, so this assumes that both of these are the same length. Uh, and effectively, you're taking these two arrays and mapping them onto the dictionary. You're creating the maps. Uh, they're just stored separately because that's how you get an inspector easily. Uh, normally, structs would work. I don't know why they aren't, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. We can work from there. Let's do our object list dot add uh, we're going to add a key codes key codes uh, of i and then we're going to do our game objects of i and that should initialize our dictionary uh, so this should work now and then all we need to do is create our prefab uh, so just to make sure that's working 
we should see two of these. And we do. Uh, so just for test, we're going to create one. Uh, this is going to happen when I press the A button. Sure. So when I hit A, it will spawn something under my cursor. Uh, let's see here. We have game object. I'm going to need a really quick game object. So let's just create like a sphere. Uh, I'll add a rigid body so it kind of falls. And that, that's good enough. Cool. So I'm going to attach that to that. So now we should be able to press A and it will drop a sphere. Uh, we just need to make it so it actually drops it. Uh, and so how we do that is we grab a physics test. Uh, so uh, that means we're going to need a camera. So we can either use the main camera or we can actually grab the camera that this is attached to. I don't know what's best. Uh, so we're, I think for now we'll just stick to the main camera uh, just because it, it's going to be easier that way. Main dot ray, screen point to ray. So we want to take a screen point, the mouse screen point, which is going to be the mouse position here. And we want to create a ray from that. Uh, so we have our ray here. And then we're going to take our camera, the main camera, take the mouse position. And then based off of the frustrum uh, of that camera, we're going to calculate a ray and project that out. So. That will give us a ray that we can use for our physics our raycasts. And then if our physics raycast uh, dot ray, we want to just use the ray here. And that should be all we need. Just cast a simple ray, and then we're good. If we hit anything, uh, then we want to instantiate a new uh, prefab is what we were calling it. Uh, and we want this to be at the, I don't have a hit information, uh, so we're going to need a ray cast hit object, so we can pass that out. Uh, just take the out like so. And then let's grab the position. So hit dot point, that should be the point where we hit. Uh, and then I'm going to just spawn it with the quaternion identity, which will just be 000. zero, zero. Uh, and that will spawn it at the position. I don't really want that though. Uh, I actually want it to spawn a little bit above, just so like with this sphere, the origin is actually in the middle. Uh, so it would spawn halfway in and I don't want that. So we're gonna give it a float spawn height. And that's just going to uh, kick it up a bit so we can drop it from some amount of angle, which is why we have that. Uh, it's why we have our, what am I thinking of? It's why we have the rigid body there. So we want our height, spawn height. There we go. And now we sh theoretically should be able to play this. Uh, let's set that spawn height to something. Uh, let's say 10. Uh, so the left side here is actually our scene uh, and the right or sorry the left side is our game and the right side is our scene I have it kind of split up so this is our scene the one I'm shaking about I ignore the grass I'm just using the same scene as our grass renderer uh, because uh, this is going to be used there first uh, and then our game is over here so we should be able to hit a and it will spawn above you can see it drops onto my cursor so we know it's working ish uh, and that's that's that so we should be able to configure this uh to drop as many things and actually if i had tied a bunch of things uh, like we can spawn a bunch of the same thing but actually the way this is implemented we can spawn anything bound to any key uh, so it's actually a fairly easy way to spawn just objects into your world uh, and if we can get this working in the editor then it'd be a really nice like hot key way like maybe turn like a number pad or some extra keys maybe you have like i don't know some other controller somewhere it might be an easy way to turn that into a way to quickly drop objects into your scene 
um, we can obviously refine how the positioning and stuff works. But yeah, that's what I wanted to do for this video. So that's, yeah, that's it. Uh -huh. So if there's anything else you guys want to see, any other videos you have uh, or want to see, uh, I'd love to hear it. I'm always looking for new ideas and it's a, it's a great way for us to kind of learn from one another. So uh, yeah, if there's anything you guys want to, want to hear or want me to improve or change, let me know because that's how I get better and hopefully, hopefully it helps you guys out too. So yeah, till next time, see you internet.